Right, there's a reason you found me here, and that's because you're probably browsing YouTube too much. But one of the things that I do is I obviously watch other people's videos. And I have to say, I'm getting some mixed channels, okay? So, and I do like to subscribe to mixed channels. So you've got some channels that have been predicting this crash for months, okay? They've been saying the market's going to go down by 20%, 30%. Um, and then you got comments underneath it. What happened to your prediction? What happened to that? Well, their argument is, well, actually, nothing's really happened. It's only been six, seven months since they made the predictions, and they're still on track for this to happen. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Then you've got other sort of channels, which have probably got some um, ulterior motives around that. You know, you've got people that are showing data from Zoopla, for example, saying it's stabilized or there's been a bounce back on, and the market's in, not in bad shape. Um, you've got some lender sentiments out there saying, you know, buy to let's still okay, we're still lending, lenders are still there. Um, so it's an interesting, it's an interesting viewpoint, and I, I suppose it depends on which channels you're watching and who you're taking your views uh, from. Um, now, what I want you to do is I want you to do me a favor and leave me a comment underneath. Tell me what channels you've been watching over the last six months in regards to property, who you watch, what you think, whether they're right about the predictions or not, and and really let's try to share some of the viewpoints out there. I'm going to give you my viewpoint um, and, and we'll, we'll take it from there. So I'll start off by saying a, a story. In 2007, just before the crash, just before I got married actually, um, I, um, I purchased the property. It was at the height of the market, height of the market just before the crash. I bought a three-bedroom semi-detached house in West London for £324,000, I think. Okay, got a 75% loan-to-value mortgage, buy-to-let mortgage, and stuck it on rent. Now, I remember going to the property and I picked up the keys. The next-door neighbour said, oh, my God, I can't believe you paid that much for it. You know, you've paid well over the odds and this is, you know, um, I, I, you know I don't think it's worth that. So I thought, oh, well, that was a bit of a funny thing for your neighbor to say. But anyway, I bought this property and I kept it for a number of years. Um, and lo and behold, the crash happened. So the, for the first one or two years, it wasn't doing very well. It went, un, you know, it wasn't, the, the equity didn't go up. It didn't go down too much, but it didn't go up. But I was on a five-year fix and I just thought, well, I'll just forget about it. Uh, lo and behold, so we went through all the sort of the, the, the downturns and the mortgage crisis and all of that. And, and obviously during that period, I lost my job. We set up a new company. Myself and Richard set up Niche Advice. The other firm that I worked for that had four or 500 staff, that went under. So it was all sorts of sort of mayhem happening. But this buy to list had tenants in there, it was producing income and it was okay. And about, I think about five years ago, I sold that property on. Now, if I had bought it in a good location, I would have probably doubled my money. But because it was in a very bad, it wasn't in the greatest of locations, I made about 150 grand, okay? Where I could have really, anywhere else, if I bought a mile here and there, and a couple of miles out, I would have doubled my money. So short term, I probably, you know, when I was looking at the first three, four years when it was really hairy, I didn't do well out of it. But longer term, I ended up doing a lot out of it. By the time I sold it, they changed the capital gains tax rules. And, you know, it was like, you know, I was a higher rate taxpayer from that perspective. So, you know, I got hammered on tax because it was a buy to let investment and I never lived into it. So, you know, I got hammered when I sold it. I, I wanted to sell it because I wanted to deleverage and I wanted to buy another property. So that sort of, I learned a lesson. If you're going to buy a property long term, as long as you can manage it sustainable, it, as long as it's sustainable, it, it's the, the chances are looking at the historical thing, the chances are it will do well. But... This is my point, is is it affordable? Now, I was actually looking at buying some properties right now, okay? Right now, I've been looking at some portals and looking at some properties. When you look at rental properties um, in outer London, the rental calculations just simply don't work. It just does not work. When you're doing it on a 5% limited company, interest-only mortgage, you're barely making it work. And, 
Forget about putting service charges if it's going to be a flat. Forget about putting on stuff. So there is a problem, okay? The problem is affordability. Now, we know there's a problem with affordability because the government themselves are, you know, they're aware of this. That's why they're looking at doing Help to Buy. They're looking to relaunch Help to Buy again. You've seen Skipton, and I've just recorded the video, and I will leave it here. Uh, the Skipton, the new 100% loan-to-value mortgage, and I've talked about the loan-to-value and criteria and stuff. So lenders know something needs to give, right? The problem is affordability is an issue, whether it's a landlord affordability, whether it's a first-time buyer, next-time buyer affordability, that's that's the problem. Now, a couple of people in my underneath my videos have actually pointed that out, and it's no secret. Everybody knows affordability is an issue. Everybody knows buy to lets really tough at the moment as well. So they're saying the fundamentals is that the market cannot do well because these are the issues fundamentally affordability is the issue uh prices have gone out and they're, they're out of control and so forth and i agree with them from that perspective but what they're not taking into account is the determination by a government that will do pretty much anything for them not to have a property crash on their hands because that's when real shit will, will hit the fans. So what you will see is all of this is right, okay? And however, we have not taken into account government manipulation of policy. Now, how can that happen? So I'll give you a perfect example, and this is first-hand example. When coronavirus started happening, our business pipeline went we had a big pipeline and it when it dried up within a month the whole thing dried up and to a, to an extent where we were thinking oh my god where's all our business gone what are we going to do you know it's all of a sudden we're, we're dealing with a third of the cases that we had so we started getting worried thinking what are we going to do now thankfully we're a small business and we could we could survive and adapt however there's no doubt the pipeline got a lot smaller the government had anticipated this, and I'll tell you why. Because the Chancellor at the time gave the stamp duty uh, incentives, you know, the stamp duty relief on second homes and so forth and first-time buyer stuff. All of a sudden, that fueled the market, and the year after that, so during coronavirus, there was a few months of downtime, the whole of the way through uh, coronavirus, property prices massively went up, the activity was huge. In fact, we had a very good year that year from a business perspective. And that was purely, purely, I would say, down to the government policy around around the, the, the tax changes. Okay? So, although the fundamentals and the core values, let's be honest, guys, the dollar, the dollar, the US dollar, if you look at the fundamentals around US dollar, if you look at the fundamentals around the US debt and how much debt they own and who they own it to, you know, there's a huge problem, okay? And the whole Western economy is, is a huge problem when you go to the US dollar. However, they're the reserve currency and still to this date, when there's a problem globally, everybody runs towards the US dollar, right? And the way the way I see it is in this, in this current climate is, the government has still got some tools and they will tweak things, in my opinion, for them not to have that crash. So what these tweaks can be, okay? And let's watch out for these and let me know what your thoughts are. I think they could change tax policy. All they need to do is reverse some of the tax changes around buy-to-lets and the, the, the way in mortgage interest relief works. That could fuel the buy-to-let market, but that's bad press. They don't really want to fuel the buy-to-let market. They've been trying to eradicate some of these uh, landlords. So they've been trying to get rid of these landlords, right? So I think that's a, that's a last resort. And it's probably, you know, people are not going to demonstrate on the streets because landlords can't afford buy-to-let properties, let's be honest. But they will. They could change tax rules. They could certainly lean on the regulator to change the affordability rules. Okay, the affordability calculations. Um, and that's probably the most likely, I would say, loosening up of criteria when it comes to affordability and behind the scenes, maybe rental affordability on the buy-to-lets. Okay, so they could implement new schemes such as the help to buy scheme, which is rumored, and other schemes for next time buyers. Um, and they could try to, because they've got some stakes in some of the major UK banks, they could try to um, 
come up with new schemes that will enable the property market to keep stable. So there are still things the government can do to impact this market. And I just don't feel that they will just let the market go. Because if they did, the whole of this economy is gone, basically. Now, there is an argument to say, has the government got control? You know, because it's a global economy, you know, the people in New York pretty much decide what the rest of the Western economy does. OK, so there is an argument to say, look, you know, we're not a standalone economy anymore. We're so tied and linked to the various powers that are out there um, that we don't we don't actually have an independent policy. And I know Brexit was supposed to be an independent policy, but it's, it's been a bit watered down. So um, that's what I think. I think don't be surprised and, and you will see the signs. If the market starts getting a bit wobbly, don't be surprised if you see videos by me or everybody else talking about these new incentives. I've done one today, but that was a, that was a, bank, that was a building society by themselves, Skipton, who've launched a 100% mortgage. Now, let's talk about that as well. I mean, I've, I've done the video on this, but let's just see if they actually, what they write on this stuff, okay? It's all great doing doing the press release and going out there and saying we do 100% mortgages. Let's see when they've weeded out all the clients and the applicants and the criteria and so forth. You know, is it realistic to say they've got, they must have no debt, for example? Okay, how many people do you know that are first time buyers that are renting that don't have debt? Is it realistic to what happens if there's a down valuation? Okay, because if there's a down valuation, things generally, they, they, there's problematic. If you've got no deposit, um, you know, it could be a dead deal. It could be a lot of processing for the lender with a not a lot of um, advantage. So is it a PR exercise? We'll, we'll soon find out about it. But you will see, if you start seeing government schemes, if you start seeing t a loosening up of affordability, if you start seeing more schemes coming out, if you start seeing things around taxation, you will see that there is going to be manipulation going on. I personally think that's what's going to happen. I personally do think that the property market is going to go for a dip. However, I still think the government interventions will enable it to probably bounce back. But short term, anything can happen in this market. But I'm not going to be deterred away from it. If there's a good deal to be had, there's a good deal to be had. I just need to know personally if I can stay, stay with it. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, and, and a perfect example of this is all those people, there's a lot of people that took out self-cert mortgages, and this is not a, this is not me sort of saying self-cert mortgages were great, but there was a lot of people that took out self-certification mortgages back in 2000 and prior to 2007, right? So self-certification mortgages were basically put 25% down and there's no affordability checks. You will just basically sign you off that you, you you've got the affordability. Now, it will be interesting, and I don't have a stat, but speaking to a few of the lenders, I don't think that book did that badly because interest rates remained low and those people bought these properties and, and the property prices tripled, okay? So they were buying semi detached houses in West London for 85K, 100K, and now they're worth 600, 700. The issue is, is they all remortgaged those properties to buy other properties and, and at the moment they're in a situation where, you know, a flat which is worth 600,000 pounds is only generating 16, 17, 1800 pound rent. That's no way covering the costs. And they, they, these are the structural problems that are out there. Um, and I think, and this is why you're seeing certain properties in price ranges. So you, out of London, you're seeing flats for 250 to 300,000. However, when you do the rentals, they're only renting out for 1,300 pounds. Well, the rental doesn't work if you're doing a buy to let. So you've got to be a first time buyer. First time buyers were attracted to help to buy, for example, because they didn't have to put as much deposit down and the government was giving them a loan. So there are reasons why different properties are coming up in certain uh, certain ways. But yeah, watch out for government intervention. I think there's going to be some news around that in the next year or so. Uh, but keep an eye out. Let me know what you think. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.